So you're running an event deep in the countryside and you don't have any internet access. No problem, with a simple tix and code reader combination, you can still scan and validate tickets with no internet access. Let me show you how now. So the first step is to go to the box office side of our simple tix site and choose participant list. And we'll select the event that we'd like to do this for and the event time. And here we, ha here we have our participant list. Um, so let's choose um, to download the offline ticket validator file. And this file is really designed just for the SimpleTix um, Windows-based um, ticket validator tool for offline use. Um, but we'll go ahead and download it now and we'll modify it so it'll work with the code reader system. So I've just downloaded it. All right, and this is the first thing you'll have to do. It's kind of a funny thing. It's um, Excel likes to sort of mess up the barcode. It thinks it's a number. So let me show you how to fix that. Go to Format Cells and go to Custom and then choose Zero. And voila, it fixed it. All right, so the first column that Code Reader wants to see is barcode. It wants that first. So we'll drag and drop it over here and replace what's currently there. That's totally fine. Now the next column is like a message that will appear on the screen after it's been scanned. Now for this um, event, everyone is the same section, you know, it's general admission. Um, but last week, um, Simple Tix, um was at a beer tasting event. And if you had a VIP pass, you actually got a t-shirt and like a wine goblet. But if you had a general admission, you didn't. So in a situation like that, um, there's different section titles. And those are really useful to display on the screen because that way you know what to give the people right after they, they, they sort of been scanned and admitted. Um, but in a situation like this, everyone's the same section, so it doesn't really matter. It's kind of useless information. What could be useful is maybe the billing name. Um, so what we'll do is we'll move this column into the second position. And basically what we're doing is this second column will always be displayed um, after the ticket's been validated. But again, if you wanted the section to be displayed for any specific region, reason, like um, you know VIP access or anything special about the section, um, you can put the section here instead. All right, so I'll delete the other columns and I'll delete this header row. And here we have um, all of the barcodes and the buyer name for all of them. And if you want to do anything funny in Excel, you know, test your Excel skills and kind of merge a bunch of other columns together, like participant first name, participant last name, and maybe their, um, their section, do all three, you could do that too. But we'll keep it simple for now and just do um, barcode and by your name. All right, so I'll save this now. And Excel will always give you lots of prompts whenever you save it as a CSV and close it, at least six prompts. And lots of resaving it, unfortunately. Um, okay, finally worked. So the next step will be to co go to codereader.com and sign up for an account. Click Create Account. And um, you'll probably want to choose the one device plan. That way you don't have any limits. Um, all right, so once you've already created your account, Let's go to databases, and you might have a few sample databases. Just go ahead and delete all the sample databases they give you, and now click Create Database. And let's give this database something specific about what that Excel file is about. So let's choo choose uh, May 16th. Um, yeah, list. I'll choose it like that because that's something specific about this this list. And I'll click um, Create Database. And now what I'm gonna to choose to do right now is import. So I'm gonna import that CSV file that we just created. And now it's imported. And that's it. So here I can see all the, all the ticket numbers and the buyer names. Awesome. All right, so the next step is to create the service. So I'm gonna click services. And you might have a bunch of sample services here. You can go ahead and delete those if you'd like. Um, and once you've deleted those, you'll click create service. And we'll choose validate scans with a database. And that means basically um, you're going to download that database to your locally to your phone. You'll have to be, you'll have to, have, or your device. And it'll have to be connected to the internet while you're doing that for your first time. But after that, you can be totally offline. It's okay. Um, so we won't use online in real time. Instead, we'll use on device and later sync online. Um, and we'll choose the database that we just created. And um, if it's a duplicate scan, we want to say invalid unless you want people to be able to come in over and over again. But in most cases, you'd want to do invalid. That way, they're just using it once. Um, and then we'll click Create Service. And we'll call it um, May 16th you know, Festival or something like that. 
Um, so once we log into Code Reader on our device, we'll select this from the list. So if you want to do 17th, 18th, as all separate services, you could totally do that. So I'm going to click Save and Continue. Um, you can create sub-users in, in your um, Code Reader account. I've already done that. You can see here. Um, so you can go ahead and give your sub-users access to this as well. I'll click Save and Continue. We'll bypass the questions. Um, nothing in the advance that we need to do. We'll click Save and Continue. And now we're done. So we now we have our um, our service inside of our code reader account, and it's linked to this database. Okay, so on your device, open up code reader, and now sign in. And now select your event. And now it's going to reach out to the internet to download that database file. That's going to have all your barcodes. This is the only time that you'll need internet access. All right, now you're ready to start scanning tickets. So on your tickets, you'll want to scan the QR code. So we'll scan our first ticket now. And on this device, it's a forward-facing camera. So um, the ones that have the camera on the back side are a little bit better. That's a valid ticket. And now we'll scan our next ticket by clicking that Next button. And now we'll scan our next ticket. And that's also valid. Now let's scan a ticket for the second time. And now you get an error message saying that it's a duplicate scan because we've already had it scanned before. And the screen's red, so it's really obvious. Now let's scan a uh, now let's scan our ticket on a mobile phone. And Crowditor works fine on mobile phones too. Now let's scan a ticket for a completely different event. So let's say the participant brought the wrong ticket to the event. You'll get an error message saying the barcode's not been found. So while you're scanning the tickets, consider your device offline. So for example, if you're in Code Reader and you go to View Scans, it's going to say no scans found. It's because your device is not really communicating at all online with your database until you sync it. Um, so that's something you can do at the end of your day or periodically during the day if you have internet access. Um, so again, so while you're doing this, it'll say no scans found here. So let's go ahead now and sync our device to see how it looks. Okay, so from our iPod, we used the sync feature. We actually pushed all the scans to Code Reader. Um, so let's view our scans now. So I'll click View Scans, and here I can see all the scans that happened um, from our iPod, as well as the invalid scans. Um, this was uh, for a ticket for a different event. Um, this was a duplicate scan. So basically, Steve um, tried to use his ticket twice there, and we can see all the valid scans. So we have a couple invalid scans. You know, no barcode found. So they probably bought a ticket for a different event. Um, you can see all the valid ones. And if anyone was kind of cheeky and used their ticket twice, we can see that too right here. And this works really well. I mean, there's a lot of reporting that's built into here too. So if you want to see the people that came the earliest, we can do that. Um, if we only want to see you know, the invalid ones, uh, we can filter just like this and see all the invalid tickets. Um, or if you want to see just the valid ones, you can do it just like this too.